Hello guys, it's Axe here once again doing a follow-up on my vlog about Nintendo. But first I want to give thanks to Cheap Ass Gamer and Go Nintendo for information about Wii Fit Plus right here. And they basically reported that at Kmart you can get it for $28. So I was, I guess I was one of the lucky people that was able to get it because the minute I did it and I checked back to see if there was more stock, they were gone. And when I went to the store itself, wow, they were gone. So, again, thanks to Go Nintendo and Chip Ass Gamer for the information. And I was the lucky one that got it. I mean, <laughs> not, well, it's very good not really meant to be physical thing, but, you know, something variety, so something different. So, I mean, it's not bad. And for 20 Twenty-seven dollars for the bounce board and the game. You know, it's cheap. And if you buy the, and you still have five more days, buy the Wii Fit Meter and download the Wii Fit Plus program, and you get it for free. So it's cheaper than buying it at Best Buy for sixty-four ninety-nine. I think. Hmm. Maybe not. Ah, whatever. <laughs> it's just a cool thing. If you're a Nintendo fan, if you want to collect Nintendo stuff, you know, why not? But, yeah, like I said, you know, $27, not a bad deal. And if you're a Nintendo collector, hey, why not? <laughs> so, anyway. Alright, well, on to the topic. Basically, I want to do a follow-up. And if you guys, if some people still didn't listen to it, I'll give you the gist of it. It's basically what I said was, in my opinion, my personal opinion, how how, how do we should, like, some improvement, like I said, market, rebrand the uh, Wii U, just make it like a hardcore system, forget about the tablet. I mean, make a, a cheaper skew with the Pro Controller rather than the gamepad, and just say, work on console the plays Nintendo games. And another one I said was that if you want a powerful that trying to sort of compete with the Xbox One and the PS4, make an add-on, like in the NES era, the Discon, or the Super Famicom, the sat of you. So, something like that. You know, even N64 had an add-on that was in Japan. I know they... In, well, let's just say GameCube with the Game Boy Play, but I, really, I don't think that's a good add-on. But just bring back an add-on, so... You know. And also, the last part is market the backwards compatibility. You know, that's why, right now, that's your strong point. Xbox doesn't play Xbox 360 game. The PS4 doesn't play PS3 games. Well, until the Gakai thing, but that's not going to be out until summer. So market the back compatibility and re-release some Wii games as Nintendo Select. So that's just my tips. It also basically said that Satori Wada should resign, in my opinion. Because he's been doing a lot of mistake, and well, let's just say he did three mistake, and just like baseball, three strike and you're out. And three times he already f that he failed Nintendo, in my opinion. But you know, it's up to the the investors and the stockholders to see if he's is a worthy guy to run Nintendo or not. But We'll see until the end of the fiscal year and see what happens. But, you know, for people who think Iwata should be per that Iwata is the right person for Nintendo, that's your, that's your opinion. My opinion is that it's not. Again, if you guys are offended with that, sorry, but I'm going to stick with that opinion. Uh, okay. So, basically, this was going to be a follow up because there have been a lot of more people also talking about the situation. And I saw some videos about it, and this one's going to be a response. Mostly one is to Boogie2988 and 
the crew from Yo Video Game, which is a, it's a secondary channel from Miles923, which is the guy, Maximilian Dude, I think that's the guy's name, which basically does fighting game, but he does like video game, and that's what Yo Video Game is. Yo Video Game is a secondary channel that basically play video games, you know, a let's play. Not bad. You should check it out. I'll provide the links for th those channels that I just mentioned. But, okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is Boogie2988. And basically what it said was his opinion about Nintendo. And I agree with everything what it said. And for some people wondering why a lot of these people keep harping Nintendo. Why is it so big deal? Why not so big deal with Sony? Or with Microsoft? Oh, oh Microsoft failed. You know, they don't make a video about it so much. But, and Sony, but when it comes to Nintendo... Man, people like you make big deal like, oh man, it's the end of the world, and people get so let's just say riled up, and they, they gotta be the white knight to protect the company. Well, there's a lot of big history about it, and like what Boogie Two Nine Nine said, that people in your in our thirties, between let's just say twenty five to thirty years old, is and you into video game. In the, mostly we play Nintendo games, anything Nintendo related, and that's why we, we actually grew up. Like even I, that's why I'm keep saying I'm a Nintendo fanboy because I grew up with Nintendo. And the history about that one that most people know is after the vid, video game cra crash, it was one guy who basically made an idea that said we gotta revive the vi video game industry, the video game market, the video game community, was Yamauchi with the Nintendo. With the debut of the Famicom and, or the NES in America, they revive the video game industry. Without Nintendo, there wouldn't be video games. That's one of the most important things. And at that time, in the 80s, 90s, video game, they're Right now, like if you notice the virtual console, such as my Mega Mix showcase video, that's where they're basically retro. Is even so that you may say, Oh, what's wow, a video game? They are crud, they're not as advanced as today's game. There was no save point, there's no mode 7, 360, or 3D graphic. It was just monotone music, most of the time, is a 2D scrolling or a shooter. Or beat them up, and games weren't really that long, but they were hard, and they were harder because me and Mother believe that the game should be hard because you're paying 50 bucks for it. And those 8-bit games, 16-bit games, they used to cost 60 dollars, 50, 40, 50, 60. Heck, when I bought Super Mario 64, my grandpa did. It was 64.99, but it was a good game. But again, they used to cost a lot. So, people who grew up with Nintendo, for us, that's our like childhood, childhood, and seeing Nintendo like this as of right now kind of hurts our feeling because it had a big history, and now we're seeing it crumble, and we can't do anything about it to some extent. But Boogie Boogie Two Nine Eight did say some some advice how to do it. One is, as of now, the three DS. Is it's a, basically their main state of, I guess, product. Uh, excuse me, it's like 11:30 in here. That's where, but just I feel like doing this video. <laughs> Sorry about it. And the 3D is basically selling. So if you don't have one, you should really check one out. I think right now they're always on sale. Get wait for a sale, and especially if it's a dollar fifth or dollar hundred and fifty dollars, you should check one, buy one, check it out. The games are they may be not as powerful as the Vita, but the variety is there. There's a lot of good 3DS game. One of my personal favorite is Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart 7, and Pokemon X and Y, and The Legend of Zelda: A Link of the World. Those are some of the good games. And they, they have some good cheap 3DS games also. Go to Amazon. 
they might they have some. It just go to the website to see what the best ones. And also, it plays T- DS games. So you have a lot of those writing. Not only 3DS, but DS games because of its backwards compatible feature. So that's why, it's, if you're going to play that to the Vita, the 3DS is a fun system. I'm, I'm not saying the Vita is bad, but it has more variety. So if you want to support Nintendo, buy a Nintendo 3DS, the XL version, or the 2DS. So that's, at least you're helping Nintendo, you know, at least make some profit because right now the Wii is in the bad state. And as of last week, Iwata basically said, <clears throat> excuse me, that yes, it was a failure and he even admitted that they failed to recognize Wii U as a successor to the Wii. And I already told my story why it kind of failed, so you can check it out. And I'll also link that one in my in the description box. My video, my other vlog about Nintendo. So, so that's why. So, what if the boogeyman, boogie two nine eight said, I can't agree with everything he said. And you know, you want to help Nintendo? Try getting the three DS. They're cheap. Well, some of them, but they're all, most of them are always getting sales. And, yeah, so I agree with everything. Another one I'm going to talk about are, is a, another video from your video game. Uh, Max and his friend Matt basically talk about Nintendo. Some of the points there, and some of them I agree, some of them I don't. First, I'm going to talk about the points that I kind of disagree with. Especially with Matt with Satori Wala. Like I said before in my other video, I think, in my opinion, and again, I'm emphasizing my opinion, he should resign. He should find a successor. He can't be running the company because this is already the third time that he made a mistake. Nintendo's basically losing money. They're not making any money. And basically, Matt said, well, if you does, does it really help if you have somebody new? Well, if this new guy basically knows about the market and he knows the new generation market, yeah, it might help. Somebody new, somebody who understands better than Iwata. And he also said, well, you know, the good thing about Iwata, at least now he's learning his mistake. At least if you have somebody new that he doesn't experience a mistake, but that's not my, it might not go well. I kind of disagree with that one. Because Iwala's already doing mistakes three three times. He, three times he already made a mistake. I mean, make a mistake one, shame on you. Make a mistake twice, shame on me. But he's been doing it three times. I don't know if he's learning or not. So I think he should resign, again, in my opinion. But really, it's really up to the shareholder and investors. It's up to them. I mean, Adam even said it, that Iwata should step down. Even Pactor said that as long as Iwata runs the company, they're not going to make any money. Again, we're not saying, I'm not saying that Iwata's a bad guy, but of whatever what the market is of video game have changed. I don't know if we can keep up or not. So I think he should step down. And this is going to be transitioning to what I agree about what video, your video game crew said. How Iwata said, oh, I didn't know about the American mar- market or the world market. Yeah, no bleep, <laughs> sorry, I'm not going to cuss, but yeah, well, no duh. He's, and people sometimes going to defend him by saying, well, Nintendo's a, <clears throat> Nintendo's a Japanese company. So that's Sony. Sony is also a Japanese company. Remember... It was Nintendo that gave Sony a reason to create the PlayStation, and I'll talk about that later. So, Sony was a Japanese company, but there was a, dip, there was a big difference between Sony and Nintendo. Sony actually was looking for a video game developer around the world, a diversity, American developer, Japanese developer, European developer. Such as Naughty Dogs with Crash Bandicoot, 
rapper, rapper, the rapper, Sony of Japan, and what else? I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Wipeout from Liverpool. That's a European developing team, which sadly to say now they're closed, but you get the idea. They were hiring developers or looking for developers to make. They're looking for developers from around the world to make games for the PlayStation. And that's what Nintendo used to do in the NES era and the Super NES, Super Nintendo era. They, but when they came to the N64, I guess something went bad there. and Namely because they came in late and they decided to stuck with cartridge because again, again the thing that Yamauchi basically had a philosophy is, his belief is, it's not about technology, it's about offering fun to the consumer. He may be right, but I think also that shot, shot itself in the foot. And this is the reason why Final Fantasy VII went to Sony. Because he asked uh, Nintendo, what kind of medium are you going to use for your console? And when they said cartridge, they said, okay, well, we're just going to go to Sony. And there you go. <laughs> By 1995, CD-ROMs were the norm for video game. And Nintendo's were one step back. So, that was the problem. I mean, the only time that they were head-to-head with Nintendo, or with, excuse me, with Sony, <clears throat> was the GameCube. It was a more powerful system than the PS2, but, of course, you know what happened there. And if you don't know, people were mostly buying PS third-party games on the PS2 rather than the GameCube, and people who have a GameCube mostly bought it to play Nintendo games. <clears throat> So again, I can agree what Matt there said. Yeah, Iwata shot himself in the foot by not understanding the world market. He knew Japanese, the Japan market, but he didn't understand the worldwide, the American market or the European market. So now he's trying to figure it out. But I think it's already too late for him. That's why we need another CEO who basically knows the American market. And I can give you another example. The new president of SNK used to work for Namco Bandai of America. The guy actually knows about the American market. So, again, somebody just who knows about the American market should basically in charge of Nintendo. I don't know if Wada does know about the American market, but like he said, he admitted, said, well, I didn't. So another one that I agree with Matt was diversity of games. In the NES era and the Super Nintendo era, yes, there were a lot of diversity games for Nintendo. There was F-Zero, a racing game. You got Mario, a platformer. The Legend of Zelda, a, oops, a adventure game. Let's see, Super Scope 6, or in the NES era, Duck Hunt. They have even simple games, such as Donkey Kong. Wrecking Crew, Ice Climber, Klukland. See, they had a lot of diversity, but as technology gets advanced, they were just cutting down. So that was the problem. I guess by the time when the Wii U came, what do we see? Oh, Zelda, Mario. I mean, it's understandable that Mario and Zelda sells Nintendo console. But what happened to F-Zero? What happened to... Star Fox, what happened to Metroid? See, that's the problem. So, there was a problem with the Wii U that they didn't have a diversity. What was the first game? Mario. Makes sense, but you, you're gonna need more. And, you know, it wasn't there. The diversity was just getting smaller and smaller. Now we just see, oh, Mario game, Zelda game, and of course, like I said before, the lack of IP, new IP. As, versus what Sony did. Every console, they had a new IP. In the PlayStation era, and they got Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. PS2 was Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank. PS3 was Resistance, Resistance Man. 
and uh, what's the other one? Oh, Uncharted, Drake Uncharted in the PS4. You got Knack, and then later on, there's gonna be Drive Club, and also another one is Order 1886. See, you gotta notice that they do have always gonna have new IP. Yeah, they don't sell. But at least they're trying to make new IP. They have diversity, such as Puppeteer. It's so mediocre, but it was in a bad game. I have it. Sorcery, a PlayStation Move game. Again, not a bad game, but the move kind of hurt. <laughs> kind of hurt your hand. And see what I mean? Like Sony now has a lot of diversity games. God of War, an M-rated game. An action M rated game. Killzone, an M rated shooter. Mag, well, okay, maybe not Mag. Let's see. Starhawk, Rush Gravity for the Vita, Hot Shot Golf, a golf game. And I'm trying to think more Sony games. Mod Nation, Little Big Planet. See, they do have a lot of those and they build up their genre. They have a diverse genre. Nintendo used to have that. Now it's just Mario, Zelda, and I guess we like we like right here with it. We play and we. What's the other one? We party, the Wii series, but then most of those games are I meant for casual. I mean, Wii Sports is a fun game, but. Uh, I mean, they do new IP, but the problem is a lot of times the IP is just not for the hardcore. That's the, that's the problem. I mean, like I said, they do have new IP. Like, in the Super Nintendo, they had F-Zero as a new IP. It was one of the newer games, F-Zero, Pilot Wing, and those are hardcore games. The N64 had Animal Crossing in Japan. Let's see, Banjo and Kazooie, again, new IP. The GameCube. Pikmin, and I guess Luigi's Mansion, Wii U, that's when the IP was starting to get, go went to a casual direction, Wii Sports, it was a fun game, it was most people, reason why they bought a Wii, was Wii Sports, the packing game, and uh, people didn't even buy other games, they just bought it for Wii Sports. Uh, I'm thinking about other IP, I'm sorry, I'm, like I said, I'm doing this at night. But the problem is, is that their IPs are getting smaller and smaller, and when they're trying to do a new IP, they're becoming limited or not a hardcore. Such as Nintendo Land, it's basically a Mario Party. It shows the good capability of the gamepad, but it's not a game for hardcore. It's not even online or ranking. It's just, oh, you can play with your friends and family. And by the way, again, as I said in another video, Nintendo really don't understand online. That's unfortunate. There's an article about it. You can also see. You can Google it. It's probably also on YouTube. Just Google. I like I said, Google it. And yeah, I'm. Sorry about it. I'm just again. Yeah, I need, I need to be calm here. Yes, I mean it is just unfortunate that their diversity of IP is getting smaller, and smaller. They're just doing again Mario, Zelda, Mario Kart, Smash Brother, good games, but how many more? How long can a Nintendo fan even play those and say until they say, oh, fine, I'm getting bored with it. The same thing. Again and again, we're doing Mario, Save the Princess, da 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 da, Zelda. <sighs> Excuse me. So, I mean, well, remember like Miyamoto said after E3, he did say that after Mario Kart 8 is released, he will show or introduce a new IP. That he is working on a new IP for the Wii U. We'll probably have to see that on at E3 2014. So, again, lack of IPs, 
or lack of IP, lack of diversity, it's just becoming smaller. So they need to work on that one. And yeah, that's basically it about your the video on your vegan is lack of like the diversity of games are becoming smaller. And they really need to work on that one. Sorry. So again, basically, I mean, the video, like I say, I do agree, but I so also also disagree with what your video game crew said. So just hopefully we'll see what happens on maybe on April, in the end of the fiscal year. Like, what's their Solution, what's gonna happen, and right now, <laughs> because of the Wii U not really doing anything, they're not even moving Wii U. That I guess out of desperation or out of they got no choice, they gotta make a new console. And I know it's gonna be bad. And if this new console comes out at 2015 or 2016, not even five years. It may be bad, may be good, it really depends. Me personally, I don't care. <laughs> just make Nintendo fun again, make Nintendo cool. Right now it's just, people are really sad <laughs> what's happening to Nintendo. The games are fun, but it's also tiring, the same thing. So we'll see what happens. So I'm interested with the Nintendo Fusion project, so... Which basically is, from what I heard, is it's a combination of of like the 3DS and the Wii combined. It's supposed to be a new console. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll just see what happens. But yeah, they are finally. They are start, apparently they're working on it. So we'll see what happened there. Uh, well, that's it for now. I'll see you later. All right, I forgot to mention this in the main video about without Nintendo there wouldn't be Sony. And I said um, I was going to give a back history about it and I kind of forgot it on the main video in that one. So let me explain it now. That during the 19, in the 90s, early 90s, Sega did a add-on for the Sega Genesis called the Sega CD. So Nintendo said, mm, let's try something like that with our system. And it's not just the SAT review. It, they wanted to do a CD-based add-on for the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom. And they hired Sony to do it. And the guy who basically was in charge of the add-on was Ken Kuroragi you know, the father of PlayStation and he did a he did a prototype for the Super Nintendo called the Nintendo PlayStation. I guess from what I heard Nintendo actually got the name PlayStation but but then of course the issue happened there, so I'll explain that. And so what happened was, at CES, Sony revealed, well, before that, I forgot about it, before that, there was some contract conflicts, and the contract was that all, that 90, 90 to 95% of the share from the PlayStation, Nintendo PlayStation goes to Sony. And when Nintendo saw that, they said, "Oh, I don't agree with that. That's not. That's a bad contract." And instead of trying to talk or discuss it with Sony about it, they, they just decided to keep it quiet and secretly hired Philips to do a CDI for Nintendo. Not even an add-on, but. Kind of like testing the water, games, CDI or CD-based games for the CDI. And of course, some of the game they have was uh, Link of Gamelot, 
Zelda Quest, and Mario Hotel. And if you want to know more about that, I will I'll give I'll provide you the link. The EVGN basically bashing on the CDI. So the whole point is this is the first game to see what would it look like a Nintendo game in its C D base. Like in the C D I. And of course what happened to that one is <laughs> it basically failed. People didn't really care about it. Nintendo fans said this is kinda quote unquote quote unquote garbage. So that's what happened. Uh, and okay, now to back to Sony. Now at CES, when they said we unveil the Nintendo PlayStation, and then out of nowhere, Nintendo said, "Oh, what are you talking about? We never made a deal with Sony. There was no Nintendo PlayStation. They were just making it up." So basically, Nintendo, and I hate to use this word. They were dick about it. Basically, backstab Sony instead of just saying, "Oh, we don't." We're not, the the project was canceled. We don't agree with the project. They just said, "What are you talking about?" They basically lied. So because of that, they made Sony look stupid. <laughs> so I'd say, and Ken Karagi basically proposed to the the I guess the head of Sony Electronics said, we can't end like this. This is crap. Nintendo just basically made us look like a fool. So the guy basically said, all right, do it. Create the Sony PlayStation, a 32-bit gaming console that not only impressed a lot of people, but they were able to manage to get a lot of third-party company to make games for them rather than Nintendo. And interesting point I'm going to add here is that there's also an, apparently an article that it was Sony's fault why Nintendo didn't have third-party support. I can agree that a bit because ever since Sony really stepped into the video game industry, Nintendo was becoming second fiddle or to some extent third fiddle because while well, Microsoft also is there and same deal. They were able to get some third party. Not a lot than Sony, but it's more than Nintendo. So ever since Sony stepped in the game, video game industry, Nintendo just really couldn't secure a lot of third party support. And to some extent, like I said, I kind of agree you can blame Sony, but guess what? Sony earned it. They prove why PlayStation, why not Nintendo? So... Nintendo, you blew it. Sony passed you by. You had a chance with the Wii, but that didn't really last long. Nothing personal. So, basically, just a bit of an answer of how PlayStation came to be. And, again, thanks to Yamauchi, without Nintendo, there wouldn't be Sony. There wouldn't be a PlayStation. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that a little bit of backstory of PlayStation and Nintendo. So, thanks for listening.